Hi, I'm Emily, and I am a level one chef. Hi, I'm Lorenzo, and I'm a level two chef. Hi, I'm Penny, and I've been a professional chef for 15 years. The last time I made this recipe was six months ago when I was alone, because I would never make this for someone who isn't me. The last time I made French toast was a couple weeks ago. Not a month that goes by that I don't make French toast. I've made this French toast any time that we had leftover vodka from my bakery that was about to go stale. So the first thing that we need is bread. What I like to use for French toast is just regular white pre-sliced bread. I have a lovely loaf of brioche, and I'm gonna cut three quarters of an inch. The best bread for French toast is actually stale or day-old bread because it soaks up the soaking liquid much better. For the bread for my French toast, I'm gonna be making a babka. Babka is essentially a brioche dough, which is a really rich, eggy, fatty dough that has chocolate strewn throughout it. And I'm gonna transfer my brioche dough, and then I'm going to chill the dough overnight. Okay, I'm gonna take my filling, melted chocolate, and I'm gonna spread it out to the side, roll the dough, and I'm gonna cut straight down. I'm gonna do a braid. And put this into the pan. I'll bake it at 350 degrees for anywhere between 25 and 35 minutes. So now I'm going to make the egg, egg mixture. mixture. Which is basically a yummy custard is what you're making. Flour. With the flour, it's gonna be crispy on the outside. Eggs, of course. Use a little bit of milk. One whole cup of whole milk. To thin it out a little bit. Half a teaspoon of brown cinnamon. Vanilla. I'm gonna zest some of this orange. And, very important, sugar. I don't really put any other flavorings or spices. Oprah would hate this. We're just gonna whisk this, and this is really important. Make sure everything is well incorporated. I use a fork instead of a whisk because I don't have a dishwasher and I don't want to wash a whisk. I'm tired already. <laughs> so I'm just warming up my pan over medium heat. I'm gonna heat this up slow and low. I'm gonna start pretty high, and then after that I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. So the next thing I'm going to do is soak my bread in my egg mixture for about a minute on each side. In you go swimming away. So some people really like to soak their French toast. I'm really more of a dipper. I don't really want it super eggy. Mmm, eggy. I want to be careful. The babka might tend to fall apart a little bit, so I'm going to use the spatula to move it around. You don't want to press this brioche because it's nice and fluffy still. Okay, here we go. Oh, that's so bad. Wait, just put that. There we go, and bing, bang, boom. I can actually see and hear that it is sizzling away. I'm gonna see what's happening on the other side. Whoa, hey, it kinda worked. Ooh, that's pretty. Come on, that's pretty. This side looks done to me. It looks set, it doesn't look wet at all. I'm gonna take this off now. Yeah, that's done. And, oh my lord, have mercy. That looks good. You can garnish this with whatever you want. I like to put ketchup on because I'm a monster. All right, here we go. I'm gonna put some butter, powdered sugar to make it pretty, some Nutella here, and with a little bit of maple syrup. I have roasted bananas and maple syrup, whipped creme fraiche, and a crumb topping to add a little bit of crunchiness. And on the very top will be orange zest. So this looks about right. I would eat this alone in the dark, maybe. I will eat this for dinner. This is fantastic. I think it looks amazing. The toast itself looks caramelized. The bananas look soft and yielding. The whipped creme fraiche looks beautiful and soft and pillowy. And the orange zest really makes me want to dig in. And? Mm. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Holy smokes, folks. We've seen three different ways of doing French toast. The essential elements of French toast are bread, eggs, and milk. Let's start with bread. The bread you choose makes a difference. 
Emily used a store-bought sandwich white bread, which has a lot of preservatives in it like calcium propionates, high fructose corn syrup, things like mono and diacylglycerols. These are not things that you necessarily want in your French toast. Lorenzo used brioche, which is an enriched dough. It's got a lot of additional eggs and fat in it, so it gives a nice tender bread. Unlike the white bread that's gonna soak up and become soggy and fall apart, your brioche is gonna hold up a little bit better. Stale bread is a really good choice for French toast. When you take your stale bread and you dip it into your custard base, it's going to soak up just enough to make for a crispy outside and it's going to be nice and fluffy on the inside. When you use a bread like Emily did, it's synthetically fresh. It's what's usually in my house and it tastes better than whole wheat. It's gonna soak up a lot of the custard right away and it's gonna make a really wet French toast that's gonna fall apart almost immediately. Yeah, great. Penny used a day old babka. The babka has a lot of fat in it, which is going to interfere with the soaking in of the moisture from the custard. It's also been kneaded, so you've developed some gluten. Gluten is something that you absolutely want in bread doughs. That's also going to make for a chewier type of bread that's going to also impede the soaking in of the custard. And then the fact that it's a day old means it's already lost a lot of its moisture, and so it's gonna wanna soak up the custard just enough. Day-old bread is traditionally used to make high-quality French toast for all of those reasons. Got it. The perfect thickness for French toast is about three quarters to one inch. Three quarters of an inch. Emily used something that was too thin and it just soaked up the custard too readily and it fell apart. Both Lorenzo and Penny had the proper thickness and you can see the difference in the results. <laughs> Custard is a mixture of dairy products like milk and eggs. Sometimes it's cooked, sometimes it's stirred, and sometimes it's used to coat things like your French toast. When you combine these things on heat, you're gonna have really nice Maillard browning and caramelization. Maillard browning is a non-enzymatic reaction between an amino acid and a reducing sugar. There are many good qualities from a flavor perspective that come about as the result of Maillard browning. Browning. Nutty notes, butterscotch notes, deep, rich kind of earthy notes that you get that you don't get from other types of browning reactions. So I just eyeball the amount of milk that I'm going to put in? The ratio of milk and eggs is very important. That looks about right. Emily used too many eggs in her custard and not enough milk. She got too much browning on the outside and the inside fell apart. It just sort of made a little hole here. Lorenzo and Penny used a really good ratio of liquid to egg. Three eggs, easy peasy. One whole cup of whole milk. So that they got the nice crispy outside browning as well as the fluffy interior. You don't want it to be too eggy, it'll be too dense and heavy. When you're making your custard, it's good to mix your eggs and your dairy very well. Make sure everything is well incorporated. You don't want spots of egg white and egg yolk and wet spots from the milk in your French toast. When you mix your eggs, the egg white or the albumin needs to be well incorporated. There's a protein called ovomucin that gives that globular quality to the egg white. And if it's not incorporated, you're gonna have big chunks of egg white in your French toast. You don't wanna over soak your French toast. Remember, you want a crispy outside and a fluffy but not wet interior. If you soak it for a long time, like Emily did, for about a minute on each side, it's gonna be super wet. If you soak it for a moderate amount of time, like Lorenzo, 20 seconds on each side. Might be on the wet side, but a little more fluffy. Penny did it perfectly. Great! She did a quick turn in the custard and got her French toast right on the grill, and she got that crispy outside and the fluffy interior. You can complement your French toast with a variety of toppings like our chefs did. Ketchup. Oh <laughs> my goodness, that's so nice. If you want a crunchy element, which is a nice contrast to a softer French toast, you can add a crumble like Penny did. We've just seen three different ways of making French toast. You want to take into consideration the bread, the custard, and the cooking techniques when you make your own. 